let's dive right in. This video is a discussion of Cell Builder, a tool I've created to allow people to make their own cells, vesicles, etc. More than that, it's going to be a commentary on geometry nodes, a new-ish feature of Blender, and what they mean for Blender and for scientists looking to make 3D figures. To start, this is not a tutorial for geometry nodes. If you're looking for a more detailed, beginner-friendly video, I strongly recommend checking out Brady Johnson's video on the subject, which I've linked in the description. And for more advanced use cases, there is almost no better place to start than Arendelle's channel, also linked below. Cell Builder is a simple node tree that I've created using geometry nodes in Blender version 2.93. I've largely held off integrating geometry nodes into tutorials because the current stable release of Blender is 2.92 and the geometry nodes functionality is pretty limited. When 2.93 becomes a stable release, geometry nodes will be getting a lot more of my attention because they are really powerful. Cell Builder is a fairly simple node tree, and it allows people to make customized cells or vesicles. You could also potentially stretch it out to membranes. To start off, all I need is a simple scene in Blender 2.93, and I have to open a new window and change it to a geometry nodes workspace. I also then need to go to File, Append, and find a pre-existing version of the node and simply append the node into the file. You can find this in the file under Node Tree. Here we go, Append. From there, all I have to do is select my default cube, hit New in the Geometry Nodes panel, and now simply hit Shift-A, look for a Group, and add in Cell Builder. To get the Geometry Nodes to actually activate, all I have to do is connect the Geometry Output of the Cell Builder node into the Group Output. And you can see that is added a simple half cell cross section into my scene. The real benefit is that Geometry Nodes has given me the ability to include all kinds of control handles for this cell. I can adjust the size. I can change the cross section area. I can adjust the aspect ratio in both the X and Y directions. I can change the angle at which things are being cross sectioned. I can also change the size of the phospholipids, their density, the random seed being used to generate them for different looks. And in this case, I actually have control over the style of phospholipid that is being used. The default is actually one of the styles I created and released for free over on Gumroad. And for anyone interested, I'll be making this file, or rather this specific node tree, available for free on Gumroad as well for those who want to explore it a bit. Now, Cell Builder isn't actually finished. There are some aspects of how I've made it that don't quite work as intended yet. For instance, if I change the angle of cross-section, the underlying code doesn't quite respect that for any level of cross-sectioning. But this isn't really a product release. As I mentioned, this is free for people who want to explore it. Cell Builder, but more specifically geometry nodes in general, are an incredibly useful tool because they allow for complex modeling to be reduced to a few simple sliders. I've made and released plenty of sign-specific models chemistry glassware, specific molecules, phospholipid bilayers, crystal structures, all kinds of things. The thought process there is quite simple. Do the more complex modeling so that the end user can customize the look with materials or the scene using existing assets. I want to lower the barrier for entry for scientists trying to get started in 3D. However, that hits a wall at some point. There are only so many variations you can make available before you need to teach the end user how to make the specific thing themselves. In fact, I've had plenty of people say they prefer making the things themselves because it gives them more freedom to control specific details. That's awesome, but it's not very beginner friendly, and it puts up a big wall to covering some of the more artistic elements. As someone who makes tutorials, do I really want to spend 30 minutes explaining how to customize the model for a phospholipid bilayer, and then spend another 30 minutes doing a deep dive into setting up the scene lights and the cameras? Actually, yes, I do. But it's not very practical to repeat that time and time again, and tutorials already take a long time. Geometry nodes are part of the idea of a procedural workflow, where things can be customized on the fly or throughout the process. The thing that makes them particularly nice is that it allows me to make tools like Cell Builder available. Now, instead of a long video that goes through all the basics that you need to learn before you can watch the other long video on how to set up every aspect of the scene the way that you need to, instead, all I have to say is go ahead and download Cell Builder for free and we can get started making our figure. That lets the focus shift to the final product, and it gives us a lot more opportunity to discuss some of the artistic decisions without limiting beginner users to a small selection of models that are freely available. If you follow the 3D community, particularly in Blender, you'll see a lot of people commenting about how geometry nodes are going to transform the software. Procedural approaches are not new. Houdini makes extensive use of them already. 
In Blender, procedural workflows for designing custom shaders have been used for some time to great effect. Just check out the results of any node vember. Geometry nodes are not a perfect catch-all solution, and like any tool, it fits into the toolbox of 3D alongside the others. I'm not going to be switching outright to only geometry nodes tutorials as soon as 2.93 comes out. There are some things where you just need to model the specific object. My next asset release will be a wide variety of different vials and falcon tubes, and like the rest of my glassware assets, they're modeled from the dimensions of real glassware. Procedural control over a model isn't as important for that. Similarly, one of my upcoming tutorials will be on making optical setups using Blender, and there's significantly less artistic license available for both your models and their positions in the scene when you happen to be ray tracing the path of a laser through them. With all that said, I am really excited about geometry nodes because it is going to make a lot of common figure elements that required long tutorials and complex modeling much more accessible to beginners, and that lower barrier to entry means more opportunity to discuss details of how to set up a better figure without having to worry about getting there through some of the technical weeds of making one. And that just about wraps up this update. Again, for a better beginner look at geometry nodes, check out Brady Johnson's video. For those who want to explore Cell Builder, you can download it for free from Gumroad, but you will need to use Blender version 2.93. Many thanks, as always, to the Patreon supporters of the channel who make it possible for me to create the tutorials and tools available. And as always, thanks for coming out. If you enjoyed this video or found it insightful, consider subscribing, sharing with your friends and colleagues, or supporting me on Patreon. Until next time, you have yourselves a great old day.